force of greed through the smoke. Leonard Cohen's Democracy. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Barack Obama's announcement of Senator Joseph Biden to be his running mate came early on Saturday morning, just two days before the opening day of the Democratic National Convention. His selection capped weeks of speculation and punditry over who would serve as the Democrats' vice presidential nominee. The 65-year-old Biden has a long history in Washington politics, with more than three decades in the Senate. Who was elected in 1972 at the age of 29, is the fourth longest serving Democratic senator in Congress. Obama and Biden made their first joint appearance at an afternoon rally in Springfield, Illinois, on Saturday at the old state capitol where Obama announced his candidacy almost two uh, years ago. Speaking before a crowd of 35,000, Obama praised the Delaware senator's experience. Joe Biden is that rare mix. For decades, He's brought change to Washington, but Washington hasn't changed him. He's an expert on foreign policy whose heart and values are firmly rooted in the middle class. After Biden took to the stage, he wasted no time in using his platform to criticize presumptive no Republican presidential nominee John McCain. Ladies and gentlemen, your kitchen table's like mine. You sit there at night before you put the kids, after you put the kids to bed, and you talk. You talk about it what you need. You talk about how much you're worried about being able to pay the bills. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a worry John McCain has to worry about. It's a pretty hard experience. He'll have to figure out which of the seven kitchen tables to sit at. I've in 2007, Biden competed against Obama for the presidential nomination during his campaign. He once declared that Obama was not yet ready for the presidency. He also drew heavy criticism for a racially charged remark about Obama that he made while speaking to a reporter from the New York Observer. You got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who was articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a story, man. Yeah. But much of the focus of Obama's selection of Biden to be his running mate has centered on his foreign policy experience. Biden serves as the chair of the powerful Senate Foreign Relations Committee. In 2002, he helped push through a Senate resolution authorizing the invasion of Iraq. He's since become a persistent critic of President Bush's policies in Iraq and the so-called troop surge. We spend the rest of the hour with a debate on Senator Biden's foreign policy. Steve Clements, senior fellow at the New America Foundation, where he directs American strategy program, runs the popular blog, The Washington WashingtonNote.com. His latest article in support of Biden is Why Joe Biden is Vital and the Right Choice. Steve Zunis is also with us, professor of politics and international studies at the University of San Francisco, where he chairs the program in Middle Eastern Studies. He's a senior policy analyst for the po Foreign Policy and Focus Project at Institute for Policy Studies. His latest article is critical of Biden. It's called Biden, Iraq, and Obama's Betrayal. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Steve Clements, let's begin with you. Right. Why do you like this choice, Joe Biden, as the vice presidential nominee. Before it was a fad, Joe Biden was a great ally uh, for those who were worried against, uh, worried about John Bolton. Uh, in early 2007, when President Bush rejected the Iraq Study Group report, and essentially in his State of the Union address and his remarks about the Iraq Study Group report, uh, Biden was the first to come out and ask, did I just hear Bush uh, declare covert war against Iran? And he pounded the table and, and quizzed Condi Rice far before anyone else on this. Um, on the uh, uh, on, on Iraq issues and particularly Iran issues, he came out before many other senators and began to say, "I haven't authorized a resolution in this. I'm not behind that." So, to some degree, what I like about Biden and I think makes him distinctive among many other Democrats is he's clearly in that middle area. He's not a pacifist. He he believes in the ability of a nation to deploy power to achieve its ends, but he's not somebody who's sitting around feeling like he's got a chip on his shoulder and has to use power and has to use conflict to define a president or define himself, where I think you know, people like Evan Bayh may fit that category a bit more. And I think in particular with the contrast that Evan Bayh, I think, was nearly the choice uh, as much as uh, a week ago, uh, Biden, in contrast, looks like a very fresh and important choice given, given what could have happened. Professor Zunis, you don't agree. No. In fact, I see the selection of Biden as a stunning betrayal of the anti-war movement that enabled Obama to get the nomination in the first place throughout the primaries of Biden. 
Obama correctly pointed out that uh, uh, judgment is more important than experience, that Hillary Clinton, his rival, had given uh, Bush this blank check to invade a country on the far side of the world that was no threat to us at the time and circumstances of his, his choosing. And Obama had the wisdom and courage to uh, say, no, this, is, this, is, this isn't right. We shouldn't do this. And he was going to be using that line uh, against McCain this fall. But in choosing Biden, who helped shepherd this uh, uh, unprecedented war resolution uh, through, through the Senate, uh, he's lost the edge of that argument. He's saying, well, I guess it's not that important, uh, in effect, because uh, I'm uh, selecting as my vice president you know, someone who went along with McCain and Bush instead of, instead of me in the majority of congressional Democrats. Steve Clement? I, I, I would agree with, with Stephen if the IRGC vote, the famous Kyle Lieberman resolution uh, that designated the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist act, if that vote hadn't happened, in which Joe Biden fought strongly against it, and Hillary Clinton voted for that. that uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't know about Barack Obama because he missed that vote. But that vote was, I think, a far more defining vote about where people are today and how they see these things. And of course, Joe Biden has essentially recanted his Iraq War resolution vote and regretted it. I mean, he's sort of tame. So I, I don't disagree that he wasn't part of that original crowd who voted for uh, uh, that issue. But it, ever since, Joe Biden has been a real leader in walking that back and in making sure from a legislative perspective that this imperial presidency had checks on it. Uh, uh, in fact, I think he's been one of the most vocal, uh, uh, overt critics of what Cheney, Bush, Rove, uh, and others, uh, uh, Rumsfeld, and their successors have been doing with, with you know, t just complete disdain of Congress and oversight. Steve Zinn? Uh, what uh, Biden regrets, basically, is the, is the uh, post-invasion occupation uh, was screwed up by the Bush administration, that things have not gone well uh, with Iraq. And, and in fact, he was defending his vote until about the time he decided to run for president, and the polls were showing the vast majority of Democrats and majority of Americans overall uh, considered uh, the invasion to be a bad idea. And what's particularly disturbing about Biden was in his position as uh, chair of the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, he could have looked critically into these plans for war, and yet he allowed only a grand total of two days of hearings uh, in the lead up to the Iraq war vote, and he stacked the hearings. He refused to allow Scott Ritter, the former head weapons inspector, who would have testified that uh, uh, by all accounts, uh, Iraq had achieved at least qualitative disarmament, uh, despite requests of uh, fellow Democrats on the committee to include a number of, um, uh, of, of scholars who knew the region, who, who were we're ready to testify that if the U.S. invaded Iraq, we'd likely be bogged down in a bloody counterinsurgency war for years amid a rising sectarianism and terrorism, Islamic extremism. He wouldn't let those people testify either. Uh, he, he, it was, it was a, a sham uh, hearing from the very beginning because he didn't want his colleagues, and he didn't want the American people uh, to hear the truth about uh, the consequences. Steve Zunis, in Foreign Policy and Focus, where you wrote this piece by Iraq and Obama's betrayal, um, you actually said that rather than a hapless victim of the Bush administration's lies and manipulation, Biden was calling for a U.S. invasion of Iraq and making false statements regarding Saddam Hussein's supposed weapons of mass destruction long before President Bush even came into office. Yes, as far back as 1998, he was calling for uh, taking Saddam uh, out, even with, you know, by, with American troops on the ground, uh, if necessary. And uh, it was one of the one of the real hawks, you know, pushing uh, Clinton to uh, to uh, even be more aggressive in his. Yeah, policies. interestingly, though, he voted to authorize the war with Iraq under George W. Bush. He voted against it with George Senior, with George H. W. Bush. Yeah, which I can't quite figure out because you know logically you can see how someone would support both wars. You could see how why people would oppose both wars, as I, I did, and you can also understand why one would support uh, war uh, with UN authorization. To, to roll back an act of aggression, like uh, Iraq's uh, takeover of Kuwait, but then oppose our act of aggression of invading Iraq. But, but conceptually, I can't even figure out how one could oppose the Gulf War of uh, 91, but then support uh, the, the uh, uh, invasion 12 years later. Does it give you any hope for Joseph Biden? I, I, as Steve pointed out, I mean, he, he, is, he is somewhat nuanced. I mean, he's, he's not a neocon. I mean, he, he's, he's better than John McCain. But I really think that, you know, uh, given that he is, was indeed among the minority of congressional Democrats who support the war, 
before that Obama could have done a lot better and, and not to and, and, and not thumbed his nose at his uh, core constituency uh, to whom he owes his nomination. Like who? I, you know, I, I, I think you know, there, there are any number of well-qualified uh, um, uh, you know, senators, governors, others that, that could have, uh, could have um, uh, been, uh, been selected. I, I'm not involved in Democratic Party politics much myself, so I, I, it's not well, me, me to judge. Let me ask Steve Clements sure. on the issue of limiting the discussion, um, what Steve Zunas was just talking about, that Joe Biden was perfectly positioned as head of Senate, uh, 